Hello, it's Denise from Woman Beyond a Certain Age. This is part two of a very special guest, our friend, Dr. Suzanne Gilbert Lenz. Now, I hope you haven't listened to the first one. Doesn't matter. You can listen to them out of order. But Dr. Suzanne is with us today to talk about her book, Menopause Boot Camp, Optimize Your Health, Empower Yourself, and Flourish as You and flourish as you age. I think that's such a great title. And welcome back, Dr. Suzanne. Oh, well, thanks for having me, Denise. So fun I'm, to be here. I'll tell you, this is, it is fun, isn't it? See, I yeah. think it's fun. I think I these do conversations, too. when people sometimes say to me, well, what's your podcast about? I said, I have really smart women on and we talk, you know, <laughs> and because I don't care who you are male and female. We are a little gender biased here. We are a little female biased, but I just think that we all have a story. But when you get to a certain age, as you have, where you have like 25 years of experience yeah. as an OBGYN, as a yeah. doctor, you got stuff you got to tell us. I, I'm here to do it. <laughs> I love it. All right. Now we're going to talk about the sticky wicket today, as I call it. Yes. Incontinence. Now, if people don't know what that means, it means, you tell us, Dr. Suzanne, what it means. I know what it means. So, <laughs> yes, it's the involuntary loss of urine, yes. involuntary being the operative here. And there's actually, I think most people think of what we consider in medicine, stress incontinence. And that is when there's literally a physical stress, not like you're stressed out, but like you cough, you sneeze, you laugh. Yes. And what's happening is you're pushing down from your diaphragm into your abdominal cavity. The bladder sits at the bottom, right in front of the uterus. I'm gonna give you a little anatomy lesson here. And the pelvic floor is the muscular diaphragm or sling of, of muscles that sit right beneath the bladder. So the, the bladder, the uterus, the rectum are being suspended in, in that muscular sling. And when you get pressure from above with the diaphragm, with that pressure from, you know, jumping, coughing, sneezing, the pelvic floor needs to press back up against it. And when it doesn't, or it does it differently because we've aged, because we've been pregnant, because we've had babies, yeah. because our muscle tone is changing, the bladder can get pushed down the angle between the bladder and the urethra where urine usually would leave and exit out into the universe. Um, the sphincter, the muscular little uh, area that closes that off and helps keep urine in the bladder doesn't work as well. And now urine is released without us meaning to. So that's stress incontinence. Urge incontinence is a little bit different. It's a little bit harder to manage actually, because it's the actual bladder muscle itself is spasming. And that can increase as we age also. And we can, we'll talk about that. I'm sure that can be very distressing. So if you've ever had the feeling like, oh my God, I got it. Like the, I, the keys get in the front door and you're, you're peeing or <laughs> you think about it, or you, you're the person who has to stop 14 times before you leave to go out because you just got to make sure there's nothing in your bladder. Cause if you feel anything, you're going to pee the, that's urge incontinence. And these are really tough subjects. People, they're embarrassing. People don't want to talk about them. Yes. And they're uncomfortable, but the good news is there's solutions. This is, <laughs> and thank God for you. And I'll tell you, I do think really, it's just embarrassing to people. That's it. Uh, it all comes down to, I, when I would teach, Dr. Suzanne, I'm, I would teach weekend classes from work, workshops on catering or how to become a personal chef or how to be a food stylist. So these were very intense, you know, six, seven hour courses. Yeah, yeah. And of course we could take some breaks, but you know what? I, I, what happened to me is I probably, I don't know, late fifties, I would be talking and all of a sudden I think I'm going to wet my pants in front of this class. I mean, wow. literally it like all of a sudden I thought, Oh my God, it wasn't an issue of, Oh, I'll, I'll pee on my break. I thought I'm going to wet my pants just so makes you feel ineffective. When oh you're yeah. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. But 
when you're talking about food costs and being in charge of your kitchen. So I, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I did a little research, but actually I just thought, because I'd seen advertisements, I thought I'm going to go get some PP pads, which is exactly, right. you know, what I did. Well, after that, I went to a urologist because my husband, when we got married, second husband, we go to Europe and he said to me, you pee so many times. And he said, is there something wrong with you? It was really very, he kept saying, I think there's something wrong with you. I think we have to be honest about there's something wrong with you. But anyway, I get to the urologist. He says, how much water do you drink? I said, I drink like two quarts of water a day. I always have. But I said, and I drink a big coffee every morning. And he said, well, you'll have to, you should probably give both of those up. And I said, that's not really working for me, you know? Yeah, right. But also I said, it's not that I drink a lot of water. I'm talking about an urgency that all of a sudden I right. can't control. What is right. that? Is there an operation for it? I'm thinking. So anyway, right. that was my thing. But you know what? I learned something. And then when I'd be with my sister, we both start to laugh so hard. She say to me, I'm wetting my pants. Be exactly what you're talking about. The cough, the laughter. And yeah. I'd say, well, you need to break down and get some pee pee pads because. Well, it's definitely better than the alternative, which Thank is. Thank you. you know, it's just not pretty, Dr. Susan. No, it's not. <laughs> it's really not. It's really not. And it's a really, it's a really rough one. I think it's, um, it's another third rail topic, right? It's yeah. like super embarrassing. People don't want to admit it. I spent, you, you nailed it. You know, it's like you're an adult out in the world how could you be a person who's peeing your pants? So, That's right. it, and it turns out um, there's all this data on it. You know, it takes women an average to like six, seven, eight years to even bring this up to their doctors. It's really terrible. It's heartbreaking. The stats are terrible. Yes. And, and then the other, and then unfortunately, you know, sometimes even when you go to a urologist who of course is the expert in this area or should be, Female urology sub is really a subspecialty for a lot of people. And you get a lot of, I mean, honestly, with all due respect to my colleagues, you get some nonsense. Like, how are you not drinking water? Like, that's not going to work know. out. So was- there has to be an understanding of the physiology of it. And then and then there has to be a variety of, of fixes. And, and the, the good news is there are. The urgent continence is a little bit harder. But there are there are operations. And for the right person seeing a urologist who specializes in female urology and does these surgeries, sling procedures, other things like that, where they lift the bladder up and they restore that anatomy can really be game changers. That's not for everybody. It's not available to everybody. And it's not what everybody wants to do. There are some tweaks you can make. Decreasing uh, inflammatory foods may help. It's probably not going to be the whole thing. And then hormones. I think people don't realize this, that vaginal hormones in particular. So as we age, we're I think people are aware even before you're in menopause, because a lot of these problems start well before menopause, actually. So there's the physical, like there's the anatomic changes for people who have gone through pregnancy. You don't have to be pregnant or have been pregnant to have incontinence. One in three women is going to have incontinence. 40% of women at at, at and around pregnancy are going to have incontinence. But we know that pregnancy has a big influence. As we're aging, our estrogen levels are declining. And estrogen is very important for feeding and nourishing the vaginal canal, but also the urinary tract. In fact, you know, we love in medicine to have our, our nomenclature, right? To have our, our words, our, <laughs> our jargon. So we now call it genitourinary syndrome of menopause because uh-huh. it's both those, those tissues are getting influenced. And sometimes people just need to get some vaginal hormones in that area to help replenish and decrease the irritation because the irritation can make you feel like you have to go to the bathroom. Yes. And then there's also um, less invasive non-surgical approaches. We do them in our office, um, energy-based devices. So radio frequency, uh, carbon dioxide laser. We borrowed these from the plastic surgeons. So people use this to help produce collagen and increase blood flow in their skin on their body, but it also works with a trained professional. I mean, I'm going to just take the probe for your face and stick it in your (laughs) vagina. Don't do this at home folks. Um, But they have designed, they've designed energy sources and levels and probes that work vaginally. And they, they really can help quite a bit, but here's the reality. Here's the reality. Not everybody's going to need to do this. Not everybody's going to want to do this. Not everybody's going to be able to afford to do this. And so you got to have the right product. So um, I, I got really interested in this because it, it sort of came with my menopause work 
And I started investigating myself and I actually have partnered with a, a big uh, company called Tenna. That's sort of like, they're, they're, the, they're one of the biggest companies in the, on the planet. So just full disclosure, I have worked with them because I believe in the work they're oh, doing. And, and I bought they, their they, product. Yes, the pro product. so their products are really excellent. Their products yes. are great. And I think the idea is to understand that even if you're doing some of these treatments, pelvic floor physical therapy, I didn't bring that one up. So remember okay. I talked about the pelvic floor? Yes. The muscles. It's like any muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it. And most of us don't know how to use those muscles. So there are physical therapists that can help us work those muscles, identify those muscles and strengthen those muscles. Very, is, very important. Is that like Kegel exercises? Kind of, but it's more. It's Kegel okay. plus because the Kegel is only really going to work the one little valve around the urethra okay. where we, we have an entire, I mean, I always do this and you, you can see me, but your, your listeners can't but it's, I'm, I'm putting my hands together at flat and they're interlaced because yes. it's a network of muscles that's literally holding up the bottom of your body. So the pelvic floor physical therapist can help you identify those muscles, learn how to exercise them, work them, make sure they're not too tight because that can cause pain. And it's a whole area of discovery because we as women, frankly, we don't know that part of our body. And it's really, really important to understand how our body works. So, but let's say you're doing all these things, you still are leaking right now. So yes. I know it's less embarrassing to go to the period products, but those products are not designed for urine. You no. need something, they're not. And people no. do it, they stick toilet paper in there or whatever they're doing because they're embarrassed, but you got to go down the right aisle, just own it. Trust me, nobody's watching you. They're doing their own thing at CVS. They're not really <laughs> looking at you buying buying Tenna products. <laughs> That's right. But, and, and then, you know, you have overnight or you have panties that are like, you know, they're actual panties. They're, you can't, they're not bulky. You won't see them little thin pads. There's, you can choose the product that will work for you. And here's the thing. They are made to wick the moisture and the acid because urine is acidic period. Blood is different. It's thicker. It's a whole different thing you need to have the right products because you want that acidic urine pulled away from your skin. So it's not sitting in there because sure you may be able to teach your class and nobody saw you leak, but now you go home and you are irritated and you cause a whole other Got problem. Got it. So, I mean, I know people are like, Oh my God, what did I just tune into? But, but I mean, again, like you got it. You just have to say it out loud. I'm a gynecologist. So I will say anything. <laughs> this is a fact. You know what? That's, it was worth getting your degree for you to be able to make that statement in life. Right. That's right. I can say anything. Try you know to scare what? me. Try. I dare you. <laughs> if, if people were more, uh, sometimes when I, in different people in my life, if people are more honest, if they can be honest with others, it helps them. It helps others. I think this is, no, if people just turned in, how lucky for them, because you know what? No one's taught. There's commercials. You know what I love is, and having done food commercials for many, many decades, yeah. the incontinence commercials, or like there's one right now, which cracked me up. It's about, I think it's, I'm not even sure what it's for, but women are just saying poop a lot. Yes. Okay. That one. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. I'm it like 2022. I'm here for it. Thank you. <laughs> and my husband, of course, kind of said, oh, that's disgusting. I said, because it was women. I know him. Now, we've been married 30 years. Every single morning, the man tells me when he's going to the restroom. Right. I have to go upstairs. I'm going to my bathroom. It's all it's like it's a military operation. Now, <laughs> in the opposite vein, I'll say to him, I'm going to go in my bathroom. Don't bother me because I'm going to poop. Oh, don't say that. He says that to me. been married for 30 years. Does he think I not poop? I know. It's, and I'm Italian. Know. We talk about that. I mean, besides the next meal, it, your mother. Well, they you go were, hand I in was, hand. Yeah, I my mean, mother was, I was raised and my mother saying, did you have a good poop? I mean, that was, that's who we were. <laughs> the whole family talked about it. So it, it, I think even though I th it's, it is different. Yeah. It's a new world. But instead of making it kind of, oh, look, these don't even show on your patty line. It, maybe if there was a line, if you were doing the commercial and then the pretty girl wearing, you know, with no, by the way, no cellulite whatsoever right. is what's on the panties. Right. If you said oh, so many of us will have our, you know, need help with our pelvic floor or the way you would describe it, yeah. people would get it. 
Yeah, but I think we're moving into that. And that's one of the like really uh, fun and satisfying parts of, of working with this company is that they are all about like educating people. And, the, you know, we both are on a mission to destigmatize a lot of these things. And like the poop thing is like a whole, that's, it's of the same it's cut from the same cloth, you know, Exactly. it's just like, these are bodily functions. We are living on the planet. Like we got to do better. We got to take care of ourselves, but I got to tell you, it is really wild to me. They have commissioned a number of studies over the last couple of years. I've been working with them. And I think the latest one came out in spring and it was just astonishing. Like people not talking to their partners, like huge numbers of people not talking to their partners about menopause, like 70%, you know, or like I said, people taking eight years to talk to their doctors about incontinence when they could be getting help. So, so we really have a lot of work to do. And just saying the words out loud is very, very important because we're, we're destigmatizing it. We're normalizing it. We all are, are humans. We all have bladders. Sometimes the bladders don't work the way we want them to. I mean, nobody is, you know, it's complicated. We're human beings, right? But yep. we, we can we can do better. So that's what we're here to do. We're here to and help people understand what's going on and how we can be living better. It's really very simple. It's and not that men hard. also men of course. Becoming, no, it's a problem for men not too. Just women. No, 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 no. It's a problem for men too. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. I have worked with male talent that was sixty or sixty-five. Where so we're you know we're doing something like a satellite media tour where they're doing right. thirty six interviews in a row yeah. now and when you get that schedule meaning I get the schedule the producer gets the schedule I've said to people I think that they're male or female they're going to need a break yeah you know, they're going to need a break or there's they're going to have an accident yeah and I've had producers say oh come on Denise don't be ridiculous if you're over 50 years old there's a good chance male or yeah. female that you need a break yeah yeah. That you're going to wet your pants. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. And it's the last thing you want to have happen to, to talent who you're paying no. for money. No. You know, they'll make a run for the limousine faster than they're supposed to. So that's, <laughs> no, I, I find it fascinating. And I also find it fascinating. This is something I didn't ask you, but I'm in the same vein. Yeah. Do men, when they suffer from incontinence, it's because their hormones are dropping also? You know, I don't know. That's a really okay. good, I, I, I'm not a male, I don't think okay. men, I'm just, and I'm, I'm not a urologist, but that's a, I, some of some of the issue with men is their, uh, something called benign prostatic hypertrophy, where their prostate Yes, it's in the in the way there actually gets larger and then it makes it harder for them to hold their urine and also their bladder capacity changes. So some of that and I, is that related to I mean, that's definitely related to aging. Is it related to hormones? I don't know. Okay. Um, but I think I'm, I'm guessing some of it also there is some pelvic floor dysfunction that's happening with them, too, because as we age, our muscles just our muscles are aging. Exactly. You know? Oh, yeah. I think you answered that. And actually that it sounded great. And that makes perfect sense to me. What is something that, no, it I makes, mean, you'll have to fact check that one for sure. Uh, no, <laughs> I like it. What are, you, you mentioned ton of products, but what yeah. are some tips and what products do you think if people are experiencing this, what should they be looking for? I know they're supposed to go, if they have to be in the right aisle and you yeah. said, don't use just, you know, um, a cotex, or I don't mean cotex. Uh, I shouldn't yeah, say cotex. like a period. The period pads. Period pads. And I don't know as much. And this is I'm showing my age, but I don't know as much about all the panties and stuff that are out there. But I know I, that there are panties that are absorbent for urine and for period blood. And I don't. Wow. Know, I don't know if they're using different. Um, if they're using a different uh, technology and you know period versus urinary tract. But um, I, here's the deal. I think you may have to do a little bit of experimentation. Got and it. I, I mean, look, if you're going to be on a long trip and you just know there's not going to be a bathroom, like you're going to need a bigger pad, right? You need That's a bigger right. pad. You know, it's just, again, it's kind of like when you're, when you're younger and you have your period, you know, like I need this many super plus and I need this many panty liners and, you know, you just have to plan ahead. I do love the the panty situation because I think that they're they're easier for a lot of people and they're not so uncomfortable and bulky. But yes. the main issue is this um, the technology being the wicking material and this what's called super absorbent polymer, which is going to pull 
the urine into the central location and not have it sitting on top of your skin. Because again, if you're sitting with that pad and you're doing a six hour teaching, the, the urine is acidic and it's wet. It's just like diaper rash. Yes. And now you're putting it on, you're putting it on genital skin on the vulva that may also have less estrogen. So it's less resilient. The microbiome changes in the area. So your bacterial balance changes protective bacteria is less available, oils, um, other secretions are less available, hair may be less available. All these things that we have in our bodies that protect us, we're getting a shift in the pH. So the estrogen change really changes things. So if you really could have uh, a lot of discomfort and infections, vaginal and vulvar infections, not just bladder infections, urinary tract infections, from wearing the wrong pad. Like it's really, I'm not trying to scare wow. anybody, No, but it's I like, understand. it's really, that decision is a really important decision. And again, reaching for the right product is going to be the best thing you can do. And like I said, maybe you're wearing your pad on the way to your pelvic floor physical therapy or on yes. our home from your surgery. But yes. I, I think almost none of us, I mean, we know from the stats one in three lifetime. And as we get older, it's, it hits more like 50% of us. So, you know, really understanding that this is just part of your armamentarium. It's part of your self-care process. It's really like, it's no big deal. You know what? That's, that's how I feel. Dr. Suzanne, I have to tell you, because when my period at the end, and this is just at the end of my, I remember my periods got so heavy at the very end yeah. before. And I said to my gynecologist and she was wonderful. I said, what is this? She said, Denise, I want you to think it a think about it as your body's last hurrah. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Well, I wore pads and this, and once in a while, my husband would say, what's going on? I'd say swaddling cloth. I said, I, totally. I, I mean, it does feel that way. I think that's one of the reasons people don't like the products That's because right. it makes them literally, you know, and we call them a, like, we call them adult diapers. You know, yes. We're called that. I feel like when they first started being out on the market, that's what they were called. Ooh, that was a no, no. Nobody wants to be in a diaper again. No, I mean, that's like, actually, I think, and I don't know, I'm making this up, but I feel like one of the top fears that people have about aging is that like ending up in a diaper I, because it I, somehow symbolizes like being helpless, being a baby, not being right. a vital adult anymore, not being able that's to take care of yourself anymore. Not being in charge of your own life. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. And I will say for older adults, especially as people get much older and if they have other medical issues and they're frail, I had a patient come in and tell me this terrible story about her dad the other day. He's in his nineties. He's totally sharp, but he's kind of frail, not very mobile. And he had a hip fracture and then he wasn't able to get to the bathroom and oh. then he, and it turned into a kidney infection and he's doing fine now, but this is literally can kill people if we're not taking care of ourselves, because now you're holding the urine you get an infection, you can get septic again, not trying to be scary, but like, it's not just like a ha ha funny joke. No, it's like, let's be prepared and understand what we can do to prevent these kind of long-term issues. Cause these are, I don't, we're alive on the planet longer. That's right. you know? You're not trying to scare people and you're not, you're trying to warn us. And I say this in the same vein, young women that ask me things, do you know what I mean? A young woman chefs as an example. And I always say to them, I don't want to scare you, but you need to sit down every chance you get. You might want to try to start yoga now. You might don't lift those 200 pound stock pots because your shoulders are going to be shot. I mean, and I always say to them, you know, I don't want to scare you, but looking ahead, there are some warning signs that you need to look at. And that's what you're saying. You're just saying you can't ignore it. That's all, you know, no, no, you You know, it's so funny because in residency, especially a surgical residency is very similar to working in a kitchen. And my path is that I had a fork in the road, actually, Denise, where before I went to, um, I graduated college and I was in San Francisco in the late eighties. And I thought very seriously about work in a kitchen. And I was like, let me just, I'm not sure about medicine. Let me do pre-med. Okay. That was the end of that. Then I read kitchen confidential as a resident. I was like, oh, it would have been like being a resident for the rest of my life. Good choice. So it's the same. And by the way, yes. surgical personalities and kitchen people were the same. Now I'm getting why we are. Okay. This is all making sense, but we used to, this is back in the day, right? Because now everything's computerized, but we used to go to the, to the PACU, to the post-op area 
and the female residents especially as OBGYN and we would get the the support stockings we would steal those sorry uh wear those because you were up on your feet all day long and we were like okay. I'm 30 I don't want to have varicose veins <laughs> that's right <laughs> so it was all about pre prevention because the senior residents were like listen girls <laughs> you can bring, come over here. We have to show you. Here's the bicitra, which is the acid reflux stuff that you use before anesthesia. We use that all the time too, by the way. So it was like you learn, you do learn from the people ahead of you about how to take care of yourself where you are and prevent issues later on. I never thought about that story, honestly, till right now, but it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And we're exactly. here to assist each other. You're give trying, a hand up. You're trying to give them just some, you know, it's a roadmap. I always say to people, life is a roadmap. Uh, life's a journey and you do need the roadmap. Do you know what I mean? Because otherwise you're going to waste a lot of gas. <laughs> you're going to, you know, waste your tires. Totally. I mean, I, one of the biggest things, and this is because I've done this so long, but young women, and I do know because when you describe in your book, and I want to say the name again, it's called Menopause Boot Camp, Optimizing Your Health empower yourself and flourish as you age when you're working 60 to 80 to 100 hours mm -hmm. a week the mm -hmm. resident mm -hmm. the same thing as in kitchens do you know what yeah. i mean yeah you're, you're and of course the other thing is hopefully i mean for me it never dawned on me that any of this was bad for me do you know right. what i mean because i loved it i loved it right. i didn't care right. i didn't care i do know you know one of the things the joke always was is we is, the joke always was, that's why, you know, when people say chefs drink, well, sometimes that's true. And the reason is we called it leg medicine. Okay. It was just a way to, you, you know, you have leg medicine. Yeah. So I yeah. think that, but I think it is, I think it's wonderful. You've written this book because what you're not only giving people some tools for their own toolbox, but it's warnings. These are warnings. We, right. we need warnings. We have warnings on freeway speeds. We have warnings about smoking. We have warnings about everything else. Why shouldn't there be warnings about, you know, incontinence? Well, it's a, it's a, you're right. It's a, it's a, it's a roadmap. It's a sign what's coming next. Yes. How do you know yes. how to get off the next exit? If you don't even know where that next exit, exit is, how do you and prepare how you got to get over into the right lane so you yeah. can get over there. You know, it, it's exactly. And I think what I encountered a lot heading into this time of life prior was a lot of um, ignoring, you know, like it's not going to happen. That's right. And actually this tennis study that I was talking about, that was one of the things that they noted something like, I don't want to... Uh, 25% or it was a little bit less than 25% of people just ignored it, just ignored menopause. They were like, it's just not going to happen. That's Which, right. I mean, that's a strategy, but that's, that's going to create a lot of uh, discomfort. That's unnecessary because you're not going to be prepared. That's right. And as we discussed, like it's, it's a blessing to be here. It really, truly is. It truly is. Now, what are, I know that tennis, just tell me one or two little things about tennis products why you're big on them because I, I like them because I think, I think they make, I like the variety and I like that they're kind of addressing so many different needs, whether it's like a light need and sort of an in-between, whether it's the, you know, every, you know, daytime, nighttime, long-term travel, the pan. I know I keep bringing up these, these uh, panties, but I, I really like them. I mean, I know they aren't, don't seem like they're cool, but I think that they are cool. Um, so I like that there's a variety and I like that they are science-based, that there's a scientific reason for why they work well. But I really, really like the effort that they're making to be out in the forefront of this body positive, aging positive exactly. uh, movement that we all are in. And just like the people who are talking about women pooping, I mean, hello, obviously women poop, women also pee. And sometimes they can't control it. And that's just a fact of life. And we do not have to make a big deal out of it. So let's that's just right. talk about it. Let's talk about it. Well, you know, and I, then the other thing that, that here's the other thing that they've, I've seen some of their stuff that they're working on. And I think this is the only other topic we haven't talked a lot about, but it does tie please. in, you know, sexuality, our yes. sexual health as we age can be very much tied. Obviously it's tied to our, how we feel about our bodies. I mean, I always tell people sex is the, the most mind body experience you could possibly have, you know, in order to have sex, 
you have to be in both your mind and your body in an integrated way at the same time. If you're thinking about it, you, that's it. You're done. I mean, guys will lose an erection if they're thinking. Okay. So, <laughs> and it's true. And women and women arousal, you know, you think you think you're dry as the Sahara when you're in 80. No, 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 no. The minute you start thinking about what's going on, that's it. You're done. So this idea that your sexual health is a part of your overall health is very important. And incontinence plays a role because there is so much shame around both areas that they can really wreak havoc on each other. And they have data on that too, showing that women who have um, problems with incontinence and shame around it have a harder time with their sexual health as well because they're embarrassed or afraid to be intimate. They're concerned about leakage during intimacy. They're concerned about how everything is working. And we know, as I just said, if estrogen is declining and you're getting the irritative symptoms with bladder, you're having some vaginal dryness and you can have sexual complaints. And the idea that if I just la, 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 stick my fingers in my ears, it's going to go away is not true. Or I guess you could just close up shop, which if that's what you want to do, by the way, I'm not here to judge you do you, but a lot of people want to continue to be sexually vital and people are sexually vital wait until they die if they want yeah. to be. And yes. the great thing is like we talked about earlier, Denise liberation, you're not going to get pregnant. So, you the know, freedom. <laughs> right. There's a lot of freedom. There's a lot of freedom to be yourself, to explore, to come into your next, uh, awareness of yourself and if you have a partner or not. And it, it, it does not have to be something that goes away if you don't want it to. All the devices that I, and all the treatments that I mentioned for incontinence actually are also very helpful for sexual health. Vaginal mm -hmm. hormones, lubricants, energy-based devices, pelvic floor physical therapy. And then the other thing you mentioned, communication. Yeah. You know what? I, um, I was traveling with some friends in the spring. One of them is this gorgeous, my husband wasn't there, gorgeous, handsome young man. He's a friend of mine. I could be his grandmother. Okay. <laughs> let, let's be honest. But I was posting pictures of us we're all around. And a whole bunch of our friends said, you are traipsing around Europe with that gorgeous young man and posting it on social. I said, it's okay. You know, we're Harold and Maud, but I can't. Get <laughs> <laughs> and people were cracking up, but you know, honestly, your sexuality, and it's again, I'm with you. Everybody should do whatever they feel comfortable with, but sexuality to who you feel about yourself, it can be very, very, very important. Totally. You know, so and, important. and how you see the world and how you live your life, you know, and how long you want to be around, I think makes yeah. you. It's another area of creativity. And I mean, I think being tied to um, one thing and, and one self image even is, is really, it needs to be rethought. I think it's completely acceptable and okay to be sad and to mourn your youth. If, you know, I mean, that's a thing. And I, sure. I, I, I look in the mirror, you know, and I'm like, it's hard to, you know, they can't see me, you can see me. But I stopped coloring my hair before the pandemic, by the way. Oh, I read um, it. And I look, I, oh, that's right. I forgot it's in the book, I read um, about it. but I sometimes look in the mirror and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what is going on? You know who, oh, that's grandma, you know? And then I'm like, oh, and, and then sometimes I'm like, oh, look hot. So, you know, is, <laughs> you know, like every day is a new day. And I think you have to just kind of roll with it. You got to roll with it. Absolutely. I let my hair go gray before COVID. I needed to because I, I traveled so much and I was sick of trying to keep it colored. And yeah. I ruined more towels and shower curtains in hotels room with the box dye tint. And my one of my best friends, a gay man who would say, don't use the word dye, dye, dye. It's tint, it's tint. And I'd say, <laughs> whatever it is, I just wiped out a whole bathroom, you know, in St. Louis. <laughs> and I hated coloring it at the end. And I loved in your book, you said the same thing. And this is taking care of yourself. Um, you said the exact same thing about not spending the money and not wait that time, that precious time of hours. Mm -hmm. And, and then I would look in the mirror and there'd be the air. I called it the air airplane landing because it was yes. just raised. And you know what? Your, your hair is supposed to go gray. Now, if exactly. you want it, by all means, if you know, whatever it is, but I love having gray hair and mm -hmm. you know what? It looks better with my skin now. It looks no, better. Totally. That's a huge, that was a big thing for me too, that I was like, 
I remember looking at people, we've all had those experiences and thinking she looks older because her hair is still dark brown. Like it doesn't match her skin. And I never wanted to be that person. (laughs) I was like, let me just stop this now. We have covered so much ground in two podcasts. I know. Uh, And I have learned some more things and I'm going to finish reading your book because I know I'm going to learn some more things. I can't thank you enough. I know how busy you are. I know how precious your time is. So everyone listening, we will have all the information about Dr. Suzanne up when Cindy does the broadcast, how to reach out to her. If you want to talk to Cindy and I, you do us at womenbeyond at iCloud.com. When does your book come out? The book is coming out on October 11th. It is oh my God, that's approaching. Your Super exciting. Yeah. Oh, of course. Congratulations. Well, I appreciate that you're people sent me a copy because I've enjoyed (laughs) reading it and thank you again so much and thank you Cindy for always keeping the train on the tracks and thank you again Dr. Suzanne I wish you all the best I hope to talk I hope you'll come back and talk to us again I would love to I loved talking to you to Denise and I loved meeting you Cindy thank you so much for your your time in like six months after and tell us the reaction to your book is because I bet you'll have gotten so many letters and stuff and information and tips that you could share to us with us i would love to do that thanks denise thanks so much goodbye everybody right when you get work bye if one or two women read this and think to themselves okay it's perfectly natural and i should just go get some tenna pads we've done our job a hundred percent there you go agreed i love Ooh, that love it <laughs> No, I have, I, there's, I loved what you said, everything you said, but it's all about shame and being embarrassed and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, yeah, and, it and is. we can't do that to ourselves. Women, there's another part in your introduction that sounds exactly like something that I've said. What was it? It's all about when you said performing and perfection is another thing. Women, we are, and we are so judged by our appearance. That's all yeah. it is. We're not, people don't say, oh my God, she was a sparkling personality and so smart. People say, she's pretty. Totally. Or, you know, we're so judged for so many things that are not important. So then when there are important things, we're almost even afraid to talk about them. Yeah. Yeah.